Hi, Rich Folly. We're on the set of Book View now at BookCon 2015. We have Lee Bardugo, our guest host, and we've been joined by Rochelle Mead. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for chatting. Yeah, you have all, there's always more than one book to talk about with you. <laughs> so we, many. We have The Ruby Circle, a new Bloodlines novel, and Soundless, um, which has a lovely cover, I might add. Thank really you. Pretty, yeah, I'm in love with really that pretty. for sure. You have to love that. And so there's, like I said, always a lot going on in your world, not to mention the Vampire Academy books. but. Great to have you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Lee was said, let's go get Michelle Rochelle Mead, and we went and got Rochelle Mead. <laughs> I've, I've told three. Rochelle this before, but when I was first starting to read YA, um, I asked my niece what I should read, like what she was reading, what she loved, and the first thing she said was Vampire Academy. And then she told me how hot Dimitri was, and I was <laughs> like, you're 14, stop, he's 20-something. <laughs> yeah, I gotta agree. Um, so I dug in and I just ate them up. Like I was, I was lucky because I came to the series a little bit late. And then the Bloodlines spinoff, just fantastic. I love Sydney, so fantastic. But Soundless is a huge departure, right? Yeah, that's all. It's a whole new thing. Yeah. What brought this on? Um, I kind of needed a, a pause after doing Vampire Academy and Bloodlines. Uh, that was 12 books, been going on since 2007. Yeah. And I have readers who will finish these in a day. And so for them, it's just, it's an endless wait. But for me, that's like every day for the last eight years. That's and so, disconcerting, right? Yeah, when, you know, you, you don't want them to become like house guests that are staying too long. And so I'm like, we need a break from these characters. And so I, I wanted to try a standalone because I'm, I'm notorious for cliffhangers. I just kind of reach the end of the book and I'm like, there we go, you know, peril and heartache. And uh, <laughs> so a, sound, a, sound, a standalone is, is very challenging for me because you have to have closure, you have to wrap things up. And so as, as a writer, you always want to improve your writing. And then just the whole, the whole idea of setting it in a world influenced by ancient Chinese history and culture was what cool. What brought you to that? Um, it's just an interest of mine, and I feel it's underrepresented here. I, I, when people write high fantasy, it's often based on kind of medieval Europe, you know, the, the Tolkien legacy, which is great and I love, but there's this whole piece of the world which is neglected in the, in the U.S. And, and Western Europe. And so I was like, let's dig around in that and just try to, try to build something cool. Is it hard yeah. to like, leave the characters behind? I mean, when you write a standalone, you don't get to go back. When you write that last page, you're like, see you later. It's <laughs> great to have you for a while in my life. Yeah, it is very hard because I am so used to, to thinking big. You know, I think about six books for my other projects, and you can do the slow burn romance right. and the big reveal that was tipped off in book one. And then in this, you've got to, you've got to kind of truncate it all down, which is totally doable, but it is, it's, a, it's a very different art. A lot more world building right up front. And yeah. also, but there is a strong romance in this book as well. There is a romance, yeah, I, I can't help myself. Uh, the, the premise of the book is this, this remote mountain village where no one's been able to hear for generations. So they, they've developed this whole society, their sign language, they're very visually based. And one morning this teenage girl who's an artist wakes up and she has her hearing back. And it just completely unsettles her whole world and she discovers all these dangers that are suddenly facing her village. So she leaves the mountain, goes on a quest with this new ability, and the romance is an old love interest who comes along. So of course things are complicated when, when that happens. Uh, but it's fun, because they've got their thing going on, but there's just so much just so much adventure, and that's what's fun. This is, it's an action book along yeah. with everything else. I have a lot of hope that, you know, I, there are fantasies out there. There's Cindy Pons and Melinda Lowe's, and, um, and for adults, there's N.K. Jemisin's book that really, books that take us to a really different mm -hmm. kind of fantasy world, and I kind of hope this will be a gateway drug, you know, where, you know, the, the, where it becomes the next big, big thing to actually start to look for broader cultures outside of fantasy, because we see so much of the medieval Europe and, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, and it's always, it's been a big thing, especially in YA recently, just the lack of diversity um, that, that is out there in YA books right now. And um, when I used to be a teacher, you know, that was a that was a big thing. I had I taught kids who were from all different countries, who were who were immigrants. They'd come from Bosnia, Rwanda, just these terrible stories, some of them. And they would read books, and they were always kind of disappointed that there weren't characters like them. And it wasn't even about the immigrant experience in America. They wanted they wanted 
the Latino Harry Potter. Right. You know, like, let's just see a cool character who's On having an adventure. You know, it doesn't have to be about adjusting to America, because I'm living that, you know, and it's a very important piece to acknowledge yeah, in the exactly, classroom. Yeah, exactly, not just issue books. Yeah, that was exactly books. it. They wanted yeah. both, and that's two very important sides, I think, um, Have you to read that. Um, The Wrath and the Dawn or Ember in the Ashes? Um, I started Ember in the Ashes, yeah. yeah. I think we're seeing more of it. We I absolutely are. And show. what's amazing to me is that the young kids who are reading are, like, living in these, I mean, I think they're developing a sense of empathy that seems to have skipped maybe a generation, but they're in these worlds where they're learning about cultures and they're learning about people, and they're so actively seeking them out now. Like you said, mm -hmm. they want the, Harry, the Latino Harry Potter. They want the soundless. They want to learn about this Asian culture. They want to learn about your world, you know, Eastern cultures. It's this place mm -hmm. they want to go visit that I think only adds their inquisitiveness and their sense of empathy when they go further. And I think that we didn't always have that, at least when I was younger growing up. And you're a parent now too, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you think that's changed? You know, I know it must change like how much time you have in the day to write. <laughs> um, but do you think it's changed like the kind of stories you want to tell? Uh, I think my stories still kind of stay what I what I had in mind, but, but you're right, the writing process is so different as far as the time. Uh, before I had kids, it's like, all right, I'm going to pull an all-nighter to meet this deadline. How many do you have now? I have two. I have boys one and three. Oh, and yeah. if I don't... Once they're mobile, <laughs> all bets are off. No, and that's exactly it. And they go, they go to school and daycare in the day. So it's like if I don't write between nine and four, I don't write at all. Because once they're home, it's, it's all boys all the time mm -hmm. and they take over. And so that's, that's been hard with, with time management and, and having a one-year-old, you know, last year was his first year and that's that's very exhausting um, just going through that and your hormones are all over the place and just trying to write was it was a very different mindset and so I feel like I'm back in my groove yeah. but it, it's still still a different thing different thing mm -hmm. now Maggie Steve Otter and I were on a little bit ago and we talked about our different processes what what's your approach do you outline do you work from the spark of an idea do you did the characters come to you for soundless first or um, I definitely have to outline when I get to the actual writing itself. When I when I hit writer's block or I don't know where to go, it's because I I skipped out on the outline. I didn't do a good enough job. Yeah. If if I do that, I've got a great roadmap and I can just go forward. So I do very detailed outlines. Uh, as far as where they come from, it's it's kind of just pieces of things. I I think as writers, you're observers of the world. You're you're always watching, and and being in New York is amazing because there's just constantly something crazy going on and so you'll see something and you're like oh that's a cool piece you know and you kind of file that away and for me they slowly just kind of come together and they may not even they may be totally different concepts things I didn't even see or think of at the same time and you suddenly realize I can merge these and you synthesize it into something I wonderful. I think of it as sort of like cooking like it's cooking in the crock pot or it's it's and then something will bubble to the surface when you need it hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, it's like fusion cooking, right? It's just like that, <laughs> except that I don't cook. Yeah, neither yeah. do I. I do the yeah. <laughs> We're both like, it's what we've seen on television. Yeah, I hear it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really curious how, when your fandom is just really strong and you've, mm -hmm. you've built it over all these Vampire Academy books, um, but when you feel like you want to go to another place, a new place, mm -hmm. um, with your books, Lee, there is a similarity between the two series. With yours, there's a, it's a pretty significant departure. Mm -hmm. the, what do you think when you're sort of bringing your fans from one series to another and sort of delivering them to something new? Um, you've built this big following. How, yeah. do they, how do they take that when they're moving from one series to another? Uh, well, my, my fans are great, I will say that. I am just constantly in awe of the feedback and response I get for them. And they, they have done a really good job of following me into new places. Because I think even when I'm doing something which, which is a departure, I, I mean, every writer has a stamp, you know, your style to certain things. And I think I put those, those in there. You know, I, I have characters who are, who are very strong but also flawed. There's bits of humor. There's romance. And so people who like those elements, they, my readers find they can bring them to a different setting because those are kind of the things they, they tune in for. And then it's like the yeah. setting is like, oh, yeah, that's cool, too. Because there are a lot of other vampire books out there. Mm -hmm. you know, there are other folk tales and retellings out there, but they're coming for the Rochelle Mead voice and the pacing. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, for me, character is huge. Um, I've the, the shows and uh, book series I've followed, it's been the characters that hooked me in. And I, I will follow them sometimes through bad plot lines because I love the characters so much. And I, I hope I'm 
not delivering bad plot lines, but I, I feel like for a lot of my readers, it's the same thing. They really connect to the characters, and I, I feel like I've done my job if I if I pull that off. Now, the last time I saw you, you were actually in cosplay. We were on a cosplay <laughs> panel together for for one of the festivals, yes. and you were dressed as uh, Bonnie. Yeah, it was Anne Bonnie Anne from Black Bonnie Sales. Black Sales is that one of your your fandoms? Is that one of your shows? Or you just wanted I, to dress like a pirate? Well, it's a little of both. Okay. Uh, no, I I like that show. It's it's very graphic, uh, but it's. The character, it's back to the characters. The characters are so interesting and they've built and built and that's, that's what hooks me. And yeah, it was fun to um, dress as a pirate. My, my distressed leather coat was actually painted with acrylic and then sandpapered. And so I smelt like acrylic the whole time and kind of started to feel nauseous. But you know what? As long as you look like a pirate, it's, it's you're just cool. just bobbing and weaving like you're yep, on the yep. ship. <laughs> now, this is a standalone sound mm -hmm. list. Although, once you've built the world, is there a temptation to do more in it? Or are you ready to move on to the next thing? Uh, I'm ready to move on. For, I've, I've got some great stuff coming that, that's all top secret, of course. of course. But, I mean, with any book you write, it's always in the back of your head. I could come back to it. And fans ask for it. And, you know, I tell them I can't write a spinoff to everything. But, you know, I've got years and years to write. And when you love characters so much, you never know what yeah. might happen. And with the new projects, can you tell us middle grade, young adult, new adult, adult? Still young adult. Still yep. young adult. Mm -hmm. All right. I saw you tiptoeing to the edge of what you could tell us there, and I'd love to get more. <laughs> you know, one of the, I, I love that um, there's a, a special moment when books are still coming out in a series for both of you, when you're just doing one at a time, and you have to wait for the next one, and there's this waiting period, same thing with Harry Potter and all these other great series. And then when you're done and you move on a series, the kids can just blow through them all in like a couple of weeks. And it's a totally different reading experience when you can, it's like binge watching a television show. Yeah, yeah. I love that sort of time you have to wait between them. So I love when you all go and start these new series because you get to start the clock again and wait for them. Well, we love readers like you because sometimes you'll hear from people who say, you know, why didn't the third book get published or the second book get published? Because people were waiting for the whole series to come out before That's they right. read it. And yeah. some series don't get finished. Right. You know? Well, I love waiting for the next one, and I loved having both of you here. Lee, thank you for guest hosting. My really pleasure. cool to be here. <laughs> and Rochelle, so nice of you to join us. Love yeah. it. And I wish you guys the best. This is a great conference. Uh, there's a lot of people who are very excited to see you both, and we feel very lucky to have had you both. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks right. for giving us a chance to chat. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I loved it too. <laughs>